the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And peace be with you. And with your spirit. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this ceremony of ordination to the permanent diaconate. We gather together this morning as a faith-filled family around this altar of sacrifice. And so as we begin, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves by being mindful of our sinfulness and asking the Lord's pardon. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. the ministers of your church to seek not to be served but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. The word of the Lord.
Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Stephen Eric Black. Jeffrey Cheslowitz. Present. William Michael Newhouse. Michael James Orange. Present.
Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, <clears throat> I would like to welcome all of you to our celebration of the ordination of Stephen Black, Jeffrey Cheslovitz, William Newhouse, and Michael Orange to the permanent diaconate of the Diocese of Greensburg. I extend a very warm welcome also to their wives, Sandra Black, Roseanne Cheslovitz, Mary Ann Newhouse, and Mary Rose Orange. And likewise, I want to extend a cordial welcome to all our friends who are listening on radio station WAOB, We Are One Body. We are happy to have you with us also for this historic occasion. And this is indeed an historic occasion because it is only the second time that an ordination to the permanent diaconate is taking place in the Diocese of Greensburg. Before I made my final decision to introduce the permanent diaconate in our diocese, I wanted to consult the priests, since the deacons would be working with and under the authority of their pastors. The consultation revealed an overwhelming majority of the priests favoring the institution of the permanent diaconate here in this diocese. The diaconate is a specific participation and representation of the ministry of Christ. This is why the deacon receives the laying on of hands and is sustained by a special sacramental grace which inserts him into the sacrament of holy orders in the order of the diaconate. The diaconate is conferred through a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that is ordination, 
which brings about in the one who receives it a specific configurement to Christ, the servant of all. The deacon is a unique sacramental sign or icon in the church of Christ, the servant. His role is to express the needs and desires of the Christian community and to be a driving force for service or diaconia, which is an essential part of the mission of the church. And this is so well emphasized in the conciliar document Lumen Gentium. Insofar as it is a grade or order within the sacrament of holy orders, the diaconate imprints a character which configures the soul of the one ordained to Christ who made himself the deacon or servant of all. It brings with it a specific sacramental grace which is a gift for living the new reality wrought by this sacrament. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, and I quote, Deacons are strengthened by sacramental grace. They are dedicated to the people of God in conjunction with the bishop and his college of priests in the service, diaconia, of the liturgy, of the gospel, and of works of charity. Just as in all sacraments which imprint a character on the soul, which is a special configuration to Christ, this grace of ordination has a permanent power. It flowers again and again in the same measure it is received again and again in faith. In the exercise of their power, deacons depend on the bishop who has the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders and are placed in a special relationship with the priests under whom they work and with whom they are called to service for the people of God. The ministry of deacon is characterized by the exercise of the three constitutive elements or munera, proper to ordained ministry. These constitutive elements are the following. The munus docendi, or constitutive element of teaching. The deacon is called to proclaim the scriptures and instruct and exhort the people. This finds expression in the presentation of the book of gospels to the deacon in the rite of ordination itself. Secondly, the munus sanctificandi, or constitutive element of sanctifying of the deacon's ministry. It expresses itself in prayer, especially in the liturgy of the hours, in the solemn administration of baptism, in the custody and distribution of the Eucharist, in assisting at and blessing marriages, in presiding at the rites of funeral and burial, and the administration of the sacraments. <clears throat> this brings out how the diaconal ministry has its point of departure and arrival in the Eucharist and cannot be reduced to mere social service or social work. Thirdly, the munus regendi, or the constitutive element of governing, governing in the deacon's ministry. And this is exercised in dedication to the works of charity and assistance and in the direction of communities or sectors of the church life which constitute charitable activities. The spirituality of service is a spirituality of the whole church insofar as the whole church, in the same way as Mary, is the handmaid of the Lord at the service of the salvation of the whole world. And so that the whole church may better live out this spirituality of service, the Lord gives her a living and personal sign in the diaconate of his own very being as servant. In a unique way, this is the spirituality of the deacon. 
Through ordination, the deacon is constituted a living icon of Christ, the servant, within the church. The like motif of his spiritual life will therefore be service. His sanctification will consist in making himself a generous and faithful servant of God and others. His spiritual commitment will be directed toward acquiring those virtues necessary for the exercise of this ministry. During the ordination rite, my dear candidates, you will promise your bishop obedience. This does not subject you to the whim of an individual. It is rather a free declaration of your radical openness to service for the greater good of God's people. And this greater good is interpreted by the bishop on the basis of specific needs which present themselves at particular times and places for the building up of the church in the Diocese of Greensburg. These needs are then entrusted to your pastoral solicitude in an appointment as part of the bishop's sacred duty to teach, to govern, and to sanctify this diocesan church. As a deacon, that is, as a minister of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord himself. And since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. Your promise of obedience is a free declaration of your radical openness to service in the church, following the example of the Lord Jesus himself, who emptied himself to do the will of his heavenly Father, who came not to be served, but rather to serve. Firmly rooted and grounded in faith, you are to show yourself chaste according to the state of life in which you are, and beyond reproach before God and man, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and for the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourself to be turned away from the hope offered by the gospel. You will not only, you will be not only a hearer of the gospel, but also its minister. In exercising your diaconal ministry, you will speak not only in communion with the church, but now also in the name of the church. And that is the difference ordination to the diaconate makes. Holding to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, Express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. And so on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Do not be fearful or anxious then because of the seriousness of the responsibilities you now assume. Rather, be joyful in the knowledge that where the will of God calls you, his grace can also keep you. Amen.
Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast in the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ? of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it now to fulfillment. Amen. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it now to fulfillment. Amen. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it now to fulfillment. Amen. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it now to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate.
Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously, graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. <clears throat> and so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, Look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we too may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation, that of your whole church, this oblation of our service, that of your whole church, which we make to you also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission they may fulfill by divine assistance. Through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, 
Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Machalinus, Peter, Felicity, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to sing, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Brent, we'd once again like to thank all of you for being here present today. We have one last bit of instruction for you. Since the sun has decided to shine on our new deacons, as we leave the church, uh, the deacons and the bishop will be, and the bishops, uh, the deacons' families will go out the uh, center doors, and they will be taking pictures outside. We ask everybody else, just for simplicity, to go out the two side doors so that we can get everybody who needs to be in the picture in the center, and everybody else can come around and take pictures from the sides. I would now invite you to take your worship aids and turn to the page with the diocesan prayer for religious vocations. And let's pray now together. Heavenly Father, your loving providence, accompanies us on our life's journey. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We ask that you continue to give all sons and daughters The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give to you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching of the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.